Let's get this thing started. All right. So this is the first meetup for Neo Colorado. Um, to start, how many of you are familiar with Neo? Okay, nice. We have half the room. And how many folks here are developers? Okay, a little less than half the room. So part of the goal for today's conversation is to A, cover the basics for what the Neo blockchain platform is, and to also kind of um, lure you to potentially come develop on top of this really cool platform. So today we're going to briefly talk a little bit about me. I work for neonewstoday.com. We'll cover that as well. We'll also talk about the history of Neo, um, some basics, uh, a little bit about the the main developer groups who are building on top, uh, building products on top of the blockchain, uh, a handful of the dApps that are within the ecosystem, how you can get involved as a creative individual or who somebody who likes to code or develop, and then some key points about looking forward and what 3.0, Neo 3.0 might entail. So a little bit about me. Um, I am a graduate from University of Colorado, Denver. I studied uh, urban and regional planning there. And I have an undergraduate's degree from Florida State University in planning and economics. Uh, I have five years experience as an urban planner. I was working with the feds, with the state, and at the county level. Uh, most recently, I was with Jefferson County in the zoning and permitting office. And I quit my job three weeks ago to write full-time for Neo News Today. Yeah, thank you. Um, and so now I'm an editor with Neo News Today. I've been with them since January of 2018. Um, I was the first hire. And I also like to rock climb. Um, this is me on the East Buttress of El Cap in Yosemite. So Neo News Today was founded in September of 2017 as a direct response to a lot of the fear, uncertainty, and doubt that was being disseminated from China at the time about ICO bans and individuals who raised money as an ICO to return those funds to individuals. We have 170,000 plus Twitter followers, 925 uh, unique articles that were released uh, and have been released, um, and we're funded by City of Zion, and we're also funded by Neo Global Development, which is a branch of the Neo Foundation. Um, my tenant as a writer, and for the people who write on our platform, um, on Neo News Today, is to write objective, fact-based, non-sensational news. So I want you to come to our website and not get any hype at all, just find out exactly what's going on, good or bad. And we cover project interviews, we cover announcements, development progress, and uh, exchange listings. So a little bit about the history of NEO. Um, in February of 2014, uh, Da Hongfei and Eric Jang started a company called OnChain. And this company designs and develops blockchain solutions for businesses. Uh, one of their first major products was called um, Distributed Networks Architecture, which is also referred to as DNA. And that created, looked at various scenarios for how digital asset applications might be supported through a variety of private and public um, blockchain applications. And so out of that came uh, a decentralized autonomous corporation and the DAC was rebranded to AntShares, which is this nice little Ant logo that you see here, um, in 2014. And then in September of 2015, the first uh, repo was opened on GitHub for AntShares. And then um, moving forward, Um, in the AntShares era, uh, prior to the rebranding to NEO, uh, Da Hongfei stated that there was more of a focus on digital assets than on smart contracts. 
um, which was sort of changed when Neo was when Anchors was rebranded to Neo in August eighth of two thousand seventeen. And this new smart economy was designed uh, as sort of a guiding way moving forward for digital assets, digital identity, and smart contracts. Um, so NEO as a public blockchain primarily focuses on regulatory compliance so that there can be smoother business relationships with traditional companies and governments. The smart economy is really a focus of a next generation of an economy that incorporates current trading models using programming code and smart contracts um, that can be executed on an exact agreement at an exact time. So, So the vision for moving forward is not to replace the economy as we know it, but it's more to create a new, efficient, fluent way to incorporate this new blockchain technology and smart contracts into um, the current economic model of, of, of how things work. So with NEO, there are two asset classes, um, global assets and contract assets. Uh, global asset is based on UTXO and the two primary um, units for that are the NEO coin and the gas utility token. And then there are also contract assets, which are, uh, an example would be the NEC5 token standard, which is equivalent to Ethereum's ERC20 token standards or something of that nature. Um, with regards to digital identity, uh, NEO focuses on providing a connection between a digital and physical assets. So once an asset has been registered or validated, um, they're able to be protected through legal regulations. Um, this includes identification information of individuals, organizations, and other entities that are building on top of the blockchain. In the future, NEO blockchain seeks to incorporate identity verification methods such as facial, fa facial, facial features, fingerprint, voice, SMS, and multi-factor authentication. Now, these are all the smart contracts that an individual can code in and use Neo Virtual Machine to upload into and onto the Neo blockchain. Um, the Neo smart contract can be used, can be programmed in any high level uh, programming language for seamless integration. Um, something like 90% of the development languages are what we see right here on the screen. Uh, so the, the universal lightweight virtual machine is an intelligent contract execution environment that has advantages of high certainty, high concurrency, and high scalability. So with NEO, there is a two-token model. There's the governance token, which is NEO, and then there's the utility token, NEO gas, which is more commonly referred to as gas. NEO slowly generates gas at a one-to-one -one ratio eventually as each block is produced. So theoretically, if we're looking at current block times, it's looking like 22 years until you get your one, ne one gas for one NEO. Could be longer, could be, could be shorter, depending on how quick uh, the blocks are you know, validated. Um, so we're looking at 2039 for the, the current model for 100 million gas to be released. 50% um, of the NEO coins were distributed during two crowdfunding rounds in 2016. And following the China FUD of September of 2017, uh, the NEO leadership offered to sell back the investment from individuals who purchased NEO coins using Bitcoin 
and a total of 15 requests were made and just over 50 Bitcoin were returned. 50% um, of the supply is managed by the NEO Foundation, which is used to invest into the ecosystem and um, for development for individuals to build on top of that. NEO News Today, who I write for, is an example of the ecosystem being funded. We provide objective reporting on what is happening with NEO. So we've been demonstrated value, and now we're contributing to the ecosystem by being funded by it and sharing what's happening with everybody. NEO's consensus algorithm is maybe similar to some projects you may or may not have heard of, delegated Byzantine fault tolerance. Um, this requires two-thirds consensus. Um, using DBFT, fewer nodes are needed to participate in the consensus mechanism. So when w one node will be selected as a speaker to propose the next block in the blockchain, uh, and, and the following nodes will follow a Byzantine problem, um, a Byzantine problem to come to agreement whether um, the block can be accepted or not. And they'll send a response. And if not, if, if they don't agree that the block can be used to move forward, then another node will be chosen. Um, and then two-thirds consensus will be reached for that. So currently, NEO is operating on seven consensus nodes. It can range up to 1,024 in the future. Block times are looking like 15 seconds right now on average. And once a block has been uh, confirmed, there is 100% finality that has been reached on the chain, meaning that there can be no competitor in a model like proof of work that can go back and say that that block isn't correct. Um, once consensus has been reached, then the block is finalized and we move forward on the blockchain. So one of, I wouldn't say it's a, a negative, but one of the criticisms of NEO has been that it's currently not decentralized. Five out of the seven nodes are operated by the NEO Foundation. Um, but this has been acknowledged by the NEO leadership, and it's a part of the roadmap as a ma major goal for moving forward to decentralize um, in the future. At NEO DevCon, which took place in which took place in San Francisco in January of this year. Uh, da Hongfei said, we have to be very careful with decentralization of the consensus nodes because the protocol of NEO is evolving very fast. We need those consensus nodes to act quickly to upgrade. And if there is a bug or a security issue, we need them to respond very quickly. So we're doing the decentralization process slowly, gradually, and very carefully. So currently, the NEO Foundation chooses who's going to be used, who's going to be a consensus node, and this is the criteria that they use to, to select those. The consensus node needs to show that it has high uptime and high performance server management, that it has the technical ability to host a node and to repair it if it goes down, that they're committed and interested in working in the ecosystem, and that there are industries that complement other current participants within the ecosystem. So currently, NEO's mainnet has seven consensus nodes that are running on top of it. Uh, five are operated by the NEO Foundation, one operated by City of Zion, and one by KPN, which is a Dutch telecom provider. Um, geographically speaking, the NEO nodes are spread across the world. There's one in China, there's one in Australia, there's one in Europe, there's one in the United States, and there is also one in Canada. To learn a little bit more about consensus nodes, how individuals can become a participant as a consensus node, you can go to neo.org slash consensus, and that will show you who the current nodes are and potential participants, as well as ways that an individual can get involved or a company can get involved in operating their own consensus node. With regards to governance, there are plans to implement on-chain governance by using the NEO token to vote for who you think should be or should not be a consensus node. 
Um, and this is slated to begin next year in 2019. So this is on the roadmap. Um, there will be functional ability for individuals to use a wallet in order to do this. I'll show you an example of the wallet in a moment here. And with regards to off-chain governance, currently the NEO Foundation is guiding the path for uh, the progress that's to be made. And there is a system of checks and balances set up through a management committee, a technical committee, and the secretariat. In preparation for today, I've been attending a lot of meetups for different blockchains and cryptocurrencies, and it's been great. The community out here has been amazing, and I've been speaking with individuals who wanted to see a comparison of what NEO is compared to other blockchains. Uh, I would have loved to have done a deeper dive, um, but this is just a launching point for us. It appears as if EOS is one of the better, more well-known um, BFT blockchains in the Colorado area. So I wanted to highlight EOS, Ethereum, and Bitcoin, and just use really simple metrics um, to compare them. I do have, if you're interested, sources for all these numbers. I have a contact information on the last slide. You can feel free to reach out to me and ask me where I pulled all this information from. I will freely share it with you. Uh, some things I wanted to highlight on NEO, currently there are 141 dApps that are on top of the blockchain operating right now. Uh, whereas with EOS, which is a younger blockchain, there are around 1,100. Uh, with one caveat that the majority of these dApps are gambling. So, you know, do with that what you will. Uh, <laughs> Ethereum has around 1,600 dApps running on top of it. Um, older blockchain, and Bitcoin currently has none, though it is appearing as if there may be the potential to run uh, some sort of program on top of that protocol. Um, and again, regarding finality, uh, once a transaction has been approved, once once a, a block has been approved on NEO, the, that is 100% finalized. You can't unpublish that through competition in a consensus mechanism like proof of work. Um, and then uh, lastly, we're looking at around 33.3 transactions per second on NEO as we speak right now, though theoretically uh, with the consensus mechanism and the node uh, setup as it is, those transactions could reach 10K per second. Um, but admittedly, the network is just not there right now. So this is a source. Um, this was sourced from Neo Global Development. They release uh, in conjunction with Neo News Today. We produce a monthly report that covers progress that was made in the past month, um, community progress, development progress, growth of the Neo core. Um, uh, developers and the actual folks who are working in NEO. Um, so we have on Twitter about 317,000 followers. We have about 97,000 followers on Reddit and nearly 23,000 on Discord, which if you want to get information about what's happening uh, from the mouth of the developer, or if you speak another native tongue, such as German or Portuguese or Spanish, then the Discord has a, a channel that is oriented towards individuals who speak different languages, and it also has channels that are oriented towards specific projects and core projects that are ongoing on Neo. If you want to get your finger on the pulse and just see what folks are talking about, this is a great place to start, the Discord and, and, and the GitHub as well. Globally speaking, you know, we're not the only people sitting in a room that are talking about Neo. Um, this, these pictures were taken over the past month. Um, Neo Global Development went on a European tour. Um, they held a hackathon and meetup in Berlin. Um, there was a hackathon and meetup held in Switzerland, and, and there was a meetup that also turned into a impromptu developer um, smart contract session where seven smart contracts were launched at the St. Petersburg, Russia um, meetup, uh, the, the day of the meetup on, on the NEO testnet. 
So there's global reach, there's global interest. You're gonna be working with people who are in different time zones and are speaking different languages. Um, so on that note, moving forward, there are, there are three primary developer groups that are working on core products in the Neo blockchain space. Um, one of the more prominent and um, English oriented is City of Zion, also referred to as Cause. Um, so City of Zion has a floating member number of about 47 folks. This changes as projects are completed or new individuals are brought on for new projects. So you're never gonna have you know, the same number day to day. Um, additionally, City of Zion funds open source development. So if you're interested in working on open source projects and they're in the City of Zion GitHub, if you find something that you can make an improvement on, you will be compensated for your efforts um, in, in that way. Um, which is really, uh, which again is funded by Neo Global Development, which is from that 50%, which is used to fund the ecosystem. So it's nice to see um, this funding being used and a responsible group that's building great products. Uh, so we have on the left hand side of the screen Neo Scan. This is a high performance blockchain or um, block explorer and also provides API. And then additionally is Neon Wallet. This is 2.0, so if any of you use the Neon Wallet, you're using version 1. Point something right now, this is gonna launch any day now. Um, it's almost there. Something that I think is really interesting, if you look on the right-hand side of the screen, there's a little gray area right now that it's, it's entitled voting. So this is what's gonna be used for Neo coin holders to vote on their consensus nodes once that becomes uh, an active function in 2019. Um, in addition to these products, City of Zion is also working on um, uh, coordinating efforts with multilingual translators so that you're getting documentation in not just one language, but you're expanding that so that developers all around the globe can really get involved and learn how to code, develop, engineer in their native tongue. The next group that is pretty prominent in the space is New Econolab. It's a China-oriented group of open source developers that want to support the NEO ecosystem. Some really cool projects that they have going on and, and that they recently just implemented is the first one, NEO domain names. You can add a .NEO domain name to the end of your wallet. So instead of using the 32 random alphanumeric numbers, you could have enterprise.neo, which is the wallet, and you can type that in and send funds, NEP5 tokens, whatever, interact with um, that wallet. So it's really, creating an easier way for individuals to get involved, not just on NEO, but in general in the blockchain space. And NEO Done Hardware Wallet is coming soon. Um, it will manage private keys, it will have English and Chinese support, and it will also have Bluetooth support. So you, you know, we can potentially move forward with uh, wireless instead of wired hardware wallet cold storage. Um, additionally, New Econolabs is really breaking into the gaming space. Um, so they have a Neo-based DAP platform and SDK that makes it easier for conventional game developers to develop blockchain games, as well as simplify the user experience for uh, gaming users. In uh, the summer of 2018, they hosted the first Neo game development competition and there was a grand total of 39 prizes that were offered that carried a cumulative value of 500,000 USD. So again, this is an investment into the community from, in, from the top layer of the NEO Foundation, really trying to get involved in bringing gaming to the blockchain sphere. And lastly is NEO Research. These guys are based out of South America. They recently spawned a new community group called Amazon Neo. They're trying to bring blockchain to Latin America and the Caribbean. Um, and so they've provided a really great res resource called Neo Compiler uh, ECO. 
which is an ecosystem of compilers, RPC servers, and several tools that can be used to test and analyze smart contracts. Um, they also offer Neo tests that include several tools for testing, building, and deploying nodes. And they also provide uh, learning materials and examples for developing on Neo for users, develop developers, and academics. These guys come from a science background, and they're really bringing an interesting voice into providing information for developers. So this graphic was lifted off of 101blockchains.com. I think it did a really um, nice high-level overview of some of the decentralized applications and projects that have built themselves on top of the NEO blockchain. Um, and this is just a handful of the 141 dApps that are currently running on NEO. Um, you can kind of see the green arms that are branching out. Uh, 101 blockchains really did a great job of kind of creating categories. And if you can't read it, those are things like services, fintech, exchanges, identification services, IoT, marketplaces, artificial intelligence, and e-commerce as well. Um, I'm not going to go into all of these. Um, you can go to neonewstoday.com. We cover every single one of these projects as news comes out. But I do want to highlight a few of these really cool projects. So we have two functional operating decentralized exchanges that are running on top of NEO right now in Switchio and Aphelion. These exchanges trade NEP5 tokens. Um, they provide ledger support, so you can trade directly from your ledger uh, wallet. And they offer reduced fees when you're using their native tokens for trading. Uh, additionally, Switchio is about to roll out a cross-chain tra cross trading functionality in its update called Callisto. There are going to be, with Switchio, you'll be able to trade your NEP5 tokens with ERC20. Uh, token standards, and eventually they're looking to incorporate QTEM as well. And due to launch sometime in the next quarter or two is Neon Exchange, which is a regulatory compliant uh, decentralized exchange that utilizes off-chain matching and will provide a fiat to crypto portal. Next, we have Effect AI. These guys are based out of Holland, and they're really looking to break into the artificial intelligence market. The, 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 the last three bullet points are one, two, and three phases. So phase one was incorporating a decentralized mTurk, which is currently operating right now, where users from all over the world can upload metadata uh, into things like pictures, which this group has actually partnered with the government of Singapore. They're providing metadata for a mapping service that the city, that the Singapore government is going to use. Um, then phase two will create a marketplace for AI algorithms that can be bought and traded and sold um, for whatever a company's needs are to connect them with the developers who design those. And then eventually a distributed AI computational power so that users can actually tap into a decentralized network and reduce their costs for consuming big data and whatever processes they might need AI for. Next, uh, we have Moonlight, which is a decentralized workforce platform that is breaking into providing better opportunities for the gig economy for workers to be matched with uh, work providers. So there's going to be a matchmaking algorithm that's built into the smart contract that will allow you as a user to either upload your traditional resume or based off of the work that you've done through Moonlight, you can actually have your merits and the value of your work and what people valued your work at built in as a trustless resume, which can be used in the matchmaking algorithm. And multi-coin remittances and payments will be able to be made through uh, a partnership with the Neon Exchange, Decentralized Exchange. And lastly, we have NAS, which is currently going through its public token sale. These guys are creating, and they already have a, a basic product out. These guys are creating a combination for decentralized internet and virtual operating system that allows you to both browse the web and then access decentralized applications that are operating on top of the Neo blockchain 
in a manner that's very similar to Google Play or Apple App Store. So it's really increasing the user interface for individuals who may not be hardcore crypto fans like we are to get involved in using their first decentralized application. So if you want to get involved, if you want to learn what's happening, if you want to you know, speak to individuals who are building on this platform, this is the top two ways I first suggest you start diving into the NEO uh, pool. So NEO Discord has about 22,000 followers on it, individuals that are participating, talking about the projects they're building. You can meet individuals from all over the world who are working on you know, their own projects. And then these are the developer community GitHubs as well as the NEO GitHub that has the core products that are being developed on there. As a developer, go in, see what you can work, you can help with, or how you can build your project on top of the platform. Or if you're an interested participant, this is a great place to go to kind of get your finger on the pulse for what's happening with the developers in the ecosystem. And then for those of you who are writers, creative designers, artistic developers, coders, engineers, there are competitions that are funded by NEO Foundation. And these are some examples of the competitions that have happened in the past year and some of the compensation that's been offered to individuals who have done really well with their products. Um, so City of Zion uh, recently hosted a tutorial competition and has hosted two DAP competitions where each of the top 10 participants were rewarded with 1,350 gas for their contributions. Um, Neo recently funded a creative design competition for a rebrand of their website and to also provide new icons that are going to be, you know, flashy and fun to look at. And then, uh, like I said earlier, Neo, uh, New Econo Labs hosted the Neo Game Developing Competition and the top place uh, game won an equivalent of $116,000 in USD value. Currently, as well, you know, there are no competitions that are going on right now, but there is a NEO vulnerable, Vulnerability Bounty Program. So if you sift through the code and you find something that can use improvement, there are opportunities to receive compensation for finding that and providing um, answers to those solutions or solutions to those problems. And there's also a weekly allocation rewarded from City of Zion for individuals who are working on these open source pro um, problems and products. And these allocations generally range from about $10,000 to $35,000 a week. So this is an opportunity for individuals to earn a living wage while they're building decentralized open source projects. And then lastly, looking forward, we have NEO 3.0 on the horizon. Some of these projects are, uh, some of these bullet points are, are very likely to be incorporated prior to 3.0 rolling out, such as user voted consensus nodes. Um, but then there's also anti-spam mechanisms. And for any individuals who might have used the blockchain in the past week and a half, you might have seen a little bit of spam because there was a project that was using a lot of free transactions and there are gonna be mechanisms put in place in the future to minimize and reduce this. Uh, potentially, NEO becomes a divisible coin. Right now, you can only own one single integer of NEO, integer of NEO at a time. It cannot be created into sub-decimals. Um, there are going to be updates to the virtual machine, and there are going to be updates potentially to the token standards, as well as something that I'm really excited about, uh, the inclusion of non-fungible token standards. So these are some of the things looking forward. Um, this was a long presentation, I know. So I want to thank you for your time and for coming out. Um, I would love to open a conversation for um, any questions you might have, uh, be they technical or just, you know, general. Um, this is my contact information. You have my email, my Discord, my Twitter. Feel free to reach out to me at any of these media. Um, please join the NEO Colorado Meetup group. And uh, I look forward to hosting more of these moving forward. So thank you. <laughs> Questions? Thanks, Dylan. Um, I think I really appreciate the transparency that um, you're bringing to NEO with NEO News and also just 
Neo in general, I think they've done a really good job um, trying to make things transparent and clear about the stage and where things are at and what the initiatives are. So my question is, um, when it comes to the the voting side of the Neo network, um, is that separate from the seven block producers that are currently kind of um, making the block decisions and then like, what's the timeline for transitioning that from seven to the potential of 1,000 plus yeah. um, block producers? So uh, it's it's my understanding that uh, the, the consensus nodes can put themselves up to be voted, and then it is up to the NEO holders to evaluate who those individuals are, or those entities, and then they can choose to vote them in as block producers or not. Um, with regards to other areas that can be voted on, I'm not sure if there's going to be a function for that quite yet. That's kind of being served right now by a lot of the conversations that are happening in the GitHubs. If you go into these repositories, there's lots of individuals who are providing options, and it's just an open forum for communication right now, but there isn't some sort of set metric for how suggestions like what to do with any of these things uh, can be voted on by Neo users, users right now. Okay, just, interesting. I'll definitely check it out. Yeah. So kind of along the same note, um, so whenever it actually comes to people that are actually able to vote, right? So those are NEO like holders. Is there any like set like standards of saying like you have to have X amount of NEO to be able to vote or mm. how those votes count? Is there any kind of like standards that are coming out in regards to that? Yeah, I don't have an answer for you right now if there's a certain weight that's gonna be provided to individuals. You know, if you have X amount of NEO, you can vote on Y topic, or you know, your vote counts X amount based off of the amount of NEO tokens that are being staked for the vote. Um, that is definitely something that we can look further into and maybe even have a whole meetup oriented around moving forward. Sweet, thanks man. Yeah. I think while I'm headed over, I got one for you. Um, related to the voting as well, um, do you have any idea of what the demographic of distribution of tokens is? It sounds like that NEO, the foundation, has 50% still. Mm -hmm. um, so as you do go into voting on new block producers, effectively they're the powerhouse in deciding who gets to be the, at least the first wave of notes. Um, but how do we ensure that that gets more distributed over time. Sure, so I know some projects have like a rich list for who owns X amount of tokens. Um, I am not aware of any sort of rich list at the moment for, uh, with regards to particular wallet holders. However, there are two known wallets where the, a, lo a large portion, we're talking tens of millions of NEO coins, were distributed into for further distribution into the network. So we do know of two addresses that have a large majority of these NEO coins that are distributed to developers and developer groups. So at least we have a little bit of understanding and transparency in that way. So, um, a time, I guess. I, I'm not sure to speak as the timeline, but this is a, uh, I should definitely pass the microphone over here for a moment though, because we're gonna get a great answer. All right, so, so you mentioned that half the tokens are owned by the NEO um, Foundation, specifically NGD. Um, those are meant to be distributed 15 million per year out to the community, I think that's what you're referring to. So over, um, over a period of time, that control will dilute, right? So eventually, in theory, um, you'll reach a point where NEO has um, very little control over who is voted into, into power regarding the consensus nodes. I realize right now they actually control the votings for nominations, right, which is what Dylan showed on the NEON wallet, right? That's um, grayed out. Um, the functionality for voting is actually already enabled in the platform. It just has to be enabled in NEO CLI, which is the 
um, the code which runs the blockchain, right? So over time, um, that will actually be enabled, and then as the tokens are distributed, um, slowly the the neo um, neo global cap or sorry, not neo global capital, neo global development will actually um, lose that that control over the project. That's the the intention. Um, and one other thing on this is that also um, this voting for different consensus mechanisms or nodes um, also supports completely different languages or implementations of the NEO network, right? So if you were to decide to build NEO from the ground up, um, which is actually a project that's ongoing right now, you could do so. Um, you could start from complete scratch and implement the, the protocol and you could register as a potential consensus node for people to vote on. Um, that's the way that it's meant to be um, run. So right now it's based in C Sharp, but if you were to write an implementation in Python or Go, for example, um, you could also publish those to the, um, for voting by the community, and then the community of holders would, um, would be able to vote on what they chose, right, or wanted for the network. Um, that also goes to the, the comment about the way the VM operates, right? Um, Thank you, Tyler. Yeah, thank you. So it sounds like watching how this is going to develop um, for the distribution initially, too, will be something interesting. Like, how do you pick who gets delegated the next step out, at least, um, for distribution of these initial tokens? Um, so it'll be well, lots of more questions there. Hi, Dylan. Thank you for joining the community. Uh, it's great to hear about NEO. Uh, my question, I have a lot of questions, but the one at the end, the one that came up kind of at the end, you said that, I believe you said that NEO is not divisible, like you can't divide it. Correct. Um, can you talk a little bit about what, what, what's the reasoning behind that? And also, what does your shirt mean? It's interesting to me. <laughs> um, the shirt, I just think is pretty cool. <laughs> and I like it, yeah. Um, with regards to the indivisibility of the tokens, I don't know if I quite have a great answer for you as to why that model was established in that way, but you know, Tyler does. Well, how much is a NEO worth? Like, how much would I have to have to have one? I don't really know. Are you? Are, yeah, yeah. What is it? Like NEO market worth? price or? Yeah. Like, if I can't divide it, I'd like to know. Like, what do I have to have to have one? Oh, well, okay. So the. That, okay, so the divisibility of NEO was established so that we could create an equal opportunity for everybody to vote in the future on consensus nodes and whatever else would be voted on in order to mitigate the fact that the governance token is non-divisible, that's why we have gas, which can be used for smart contracts and can also be used for um, purchasing power on top of the blockchain. If there's anything else I'm missing, though, I would love to have you jump in yeah yeah thanks Will so right now there's there are not many users in this space generally um, you know the, the top D apps on ethereum have you know dozens to low 100s of daily active users, and maybe that's not the best way to measure mm -hmm. usage right now either. Um, EOS has a bit more, but again, you know, it's a lot of people, you know, rolling dice, um, it seems. So my question is, what, do you have any user numbers or, um, you know, you showed us a lot of applications there, you know, can you highlight an example of something that has some usage and just what that looks like. Mm. Um, you know, I'm curious, I guess for a comparison with the other smart contract platforms that are out there right now. Yeah, I think something that immediately comes to mind is the decentralized exchanges. Um, you see right off the bat that something that they're kind of going up against is low liquidity volumes, which may or may not be representative of the individuals or the amount of individuals who are using these decentralized applications that are built on top of the blockchain. Um, and we're also kind of in that sweet spot where, you know, we're still seeing these projects that are being launched. 
Um, I know with uh, Effect AI, these guys have um, up to well into the hundreds of individuals who are performing MTurk tasks, um, which is you know providing an opportunity for individuals who may not be living in a first world society to gain access to um, uh, to earning money. That said, I don't at this moment have a great you know objective number for you to say you know daily we're seeing X users on Y platform or in total we're seeing X amount of users cumulatively from all the decentralized applications. Um, this would be something great to look for look into and to present at a forward meetup or um, to even for me to look into and provide you with some information. Yeah, I, I appreciate that, Dylan. I mean, even if there's like a, um, you know, a DAP Explorer or a ranking website or something, I think that would be um, pretty cool to see uh, if you come across something like that. Do you know what sort of uh, metrics these other blockchains are using to measure daily users? Not off the top of my head. I'd have to take a look, but I can, I can send you things that I've seen that compare um, different dApps. Is, is that something you're seeing on? Yeah. I guess you, 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 could use a, sorry, you could use a token sale as an example, which is probably the, the biggest use of or implementation for decentralized applications since a smart contract running an ICO is technically a DAP, right? Um, for the, I mean, we could use the NOS one, for example. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are thousands of transactions being run to whitelist contracts or users and then participate. Um, for the, I mean, for the next token sale, there were like 100,000 people. But again, that's probably not the type of application you're talking about, right? You're talking about the actual, the users. I think Switchio is probably the best yeah. or highest utilized dApp. I think also a, a great uh, metric, and I don't have the numbers. I, I just know that, um, you know, New Econolabs was Neo Name Service, for example, uh, well over 10,000 uh, domain names were were um, lobbied for, so you know that could be one user applying for ten different domain names. But so I just talked to Ivan, okay, who's the founder of Switchio, and he's saying that um, the last time they checked, they had about twenty thousand active users with a hundred thousand active addresses that have used them historically. And Switchio is so not like per day, but it's helpful. Yeah. Thanks. Question. So my uh, my question is, as far as marketing is concerned, what what are you guys doing as far as marketing to bring in new users and to bring people to the base? Because I haven't really seen anything since the ICO, and like I'm just kind of intrigued by all the cool stuff that's going on. But then I'm like, where's this marketing end, and you know, to, to push to get more users? Like, what does that look like? Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, that is um, uh. uh an actively mentioned criticism of the development of the leadership team uh, at Neo Foundation, and um, as the best I can answer right now is that they're willing to explore marketing with individuals who reach out to them, but not to you know to the horn of Neo News today. But that's one of the reasons why we were brought on is to provide that access to increasing. Um, Western English to a lot of the information that's being released by Neo Foundation because it was apparent during the summer from the community on Reddit that individuals were asking these questions right now. Where's the marketing? Why aren't we hearing from the leadership team? You know, where's the information being disseminated from the top? So slowly but surely that's being incorporated into the, into the seam, into the, to the mesh of everything. But right now, you can see as a direct reaction to um, the community's concerns, particularly that was raised in June and July on Reddit, 
the uh, Neo News Today has has been brought on as a partner with Neo Global Development, and we're actually um, helping to provide more than just this infographic that you see. Each month we help release an infographic that highlights the development that's gone on on the core platform. And then other than that, I think, um, you know, the projects, the decentralized applications, you know, everybody has their own marketing, but really, you know, that's what Neo News Today is trying to go after is to provide you with all the information for every project that's working on top of the blockchain to provide you as the investor, or the interested individual with pertinent information about what's happening. But, but you're right, there's definitely room for improvement in marketing and, and I know that that's being discussed at the top level right now. Uh, would you know by any chance what are the times and dates for the Moonlight and NAS? So NAS has a working public, a, a working project out right now, and it's completing its public token sale in the next day and a half, two days. So it's ongoing right now. Uh, you can actually download the NAS client and get, you know, get to going on there and. We're surfing the internet and you know eventually the decentralized app store is going to be on there as well but the working product is out there right now the public token sale is ending and there's already a community that's building decentralized applications through nas actually about half of the dapps on neo right now were developed on nas um, and then with regards to neon exchange they there's not a hard deadline that can be made right now because when you're A, working with a decentralized exchange and B, incorporating regulatory compliance, you're going to be delayed by the, the processes of governments and how long it takes them for to even do a simple task. I worked for the government for five years. I understand very well how long one simple thing can take to get done. So I think quarter four of 2018, quarter one 2019 is when we can expect to see the platform take take hold. Um, but I, you know, I can't say with 100% certainty that that's going to happen because you never know what a government is going to say new regulations need to be applied. Moonlight is... Moonlight's... When is Moonlight launching? Um, so the first release will be probably the beginning of the year. Um, it'll focus on identity verified resumes, um, which is a, in our mind something that's kind of missing from the, the LinkedIn model, right? Where LinkedIn has sort of become a Facebook for people that um, want to hang out with their, their buddies that they work with. Um, I don't know if you guys have like a, a crypto exposed um, LinkedIn profile, but it, it's pretty disgusting. Like my LinkedIn profile's ruined by marketing ads and things and people posting, uh, yeah, you're nodding your head because you're in that same situation. Um, so having an identity verified um, resume that you can share with people and you can have multiple versions of that will be the first product, right? As opposed to having the, you know, I'm applying for a job and I'm gonna post um, my LinkedIn profile on my resume, which is almost a requirement nowadays, um, especially if you're a software dev, you have to post that and your GitHub profile, right? Um, you post your LinkedIn profile, what happens if you are also, you have other interests as well that are professional in nature that you don't want to be exposed to the person that you're <laughs> applying to? Um, you're kind of in this weird situation where you only get one um, presentation of who you are. Right, so that's the first release that we'll be focusing on. Um, and then the, the next release will be a marketplace release, right, and that'll come later that year, um, which will be task-oriented specifically, um, where you're, you have a, a guarantee that the person has actually completed what they say they're completing, in addition to having a verified identity for who they are. Um, then the, the third release, which will come a little later, um, will be more product development focused in nature, right, which is organizing entire teams. Um, so then in that case, you would actually have potentially salary employees, which are working within your company. And if you need to pull somebody in to work on a project or a specific task, maybe you have a bunch of software engineers 
and you need somebody for some design work, right, to, to do um, a site map, for example, right? Instead of telling your software dev that hates doing design work, hey, sorry, you're gonna do this because it's a giant pain to hire contract work in to our company, and that's what happens. Um, you can just go, if you're using our platform for project management in general already, you can just go in and pull somebody in. You don't have to deal with a bunch of the overhead. But that'll be, that's later on in the project, right? Um, baby steps. Anybody else? So I think, unless you have a question. Okay, so um, moving forward uh, with Neo Colorado, uh, it's my intention to have United States-based organizations who are building projects on top of the platform to come chat with us. There's been some interest from individuals already. And there's also conversations about providing opportunities for um, like developer sprints uh, or opportunities for individuals who are developers to come get educated on how to build on top of the NEO platform and on the blockchain. So moving forward, you know, Neo Colorado is going to remain active and try and provide a variety of resources that will be applicable to not just investors or interested parties, but also developers and other individuals. So, and I'm happy to take any feedback if you can think of any in the future for what you may or may not want to see, and we can incorporate that as well.